Good afternoon. That's not a good afternoon. Come on. Good afternoon. Now yeah, that's better. We this is a this is a really a momentous occasion, and we and we all work so hard on the things that we do um, in our day job and as commissioners. Um, we need an opportunity to celebrate, and this is definitely an opportunity that we should indeed celebrate. Good afternoon. My name is Olson Lee. I'm the uh, director of the Mayor's Office of Housing, and we're here to celebrate a historic agreement um, between the Housing Authority, um, the Federal Housing and Urban Development Department, and the city that permits the Housing Authority to utilize the Rental Assistance Demonstration Program, a relatively new program of the federal government, in combination with other HUD programs to rehabilitate over 3,500 units of public housing in San Francisco and to sustain another 1,000 more units. Um, yes, it, it pretty much covers all of the public housing stock in San Francisco, and that is why this work has taken a while and it, it is indeed momentous. The Rental Assistance Demonstration Program was developed by HUD to provide a way for housing authorities across the country to access private capital to fund the repairs that, in, in fact, the federal government couldn't afford to fund or was not able to fund. We are at the starting line of something special in San Francisco and as well as for the nation. We will further demonstrate uh, for, for Congress and for the rest of the nation how the, the rental assistance demonstration program can benefit public housing residents. Um, we know that the HUD has recently got the cap lifted um, in terms of RAD, but uh, the goal, I think, is to prove the program and to ensure that there is never a cap again so as the resources become available, we can help public housing residents throughout the country without regards to that cap. This agreement facilitates over $500 million in rehabilitation over the next three years. So it doesn't get, HUD is not giving us a check for $500 million, we wish, but they are giving us a lot of you know, uh, uh, resources related to uh, voucher assistance, which allows us to attract that $500 million to make those needed repairs in our affordable housing stock. There is much, much work that needs to be done. But this agreement is so critical because it really shapes the way that the housing authority, the federal government, and the city will work together to make this all possible. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce a very special mayor. Yes, he is my boss, so he is very special. <laughs> As part of his 2013 State of the City speech, the mayor said that we must do something to help our public housing residents and called for a re-envisioning of the San Francisco Housing Authority, which for too long struggled alone to try to serve San Francisco's neediest residents. Um, as the mayor often likes, he likes a big tent, and we had one, um, led by Naomi Kelly of the city administrator's office um, called the uh, San Francisco Ho Public Housing Re-Envisioning Working Group. And that working group clearly um, identified the challenges that were faced by the housing authority. And it also identified some of the opportunities that we in San Francisco can pull together to assist the housing authority and its residents to have a safe, decent, sanitary housing. To implement this work, the mayor has directed all city departments, not just the mayor's office of housing and community development, to work with the Housing Authority towards the goals of the re-envisioning plan. He has committed city resources in excess of $50 million for just the rental assistance demonstration rehabilitation alone. Plus, he has committed the resources of the city to serve the service needs of the residents on an ongoing basis. 
He has funded Hope SF, um, which has um, uh, revitalized Hunter's View and will revitalize Alice Griffin. And he has developed a financing plan to revitalize Patrol and Sunnydale also. He is very committed to serving the housing needs of all San Franciscans, especially those lowest income residents of the city who, who need the assistance the most. Let me introduce to you a very special mayor, Mayor Edwin Lee. Well, thank you, Olson, for that introduction. Uh, a hearty gung hei fa choi to everybody. This is a First day of Chinese New Year's, and we got a lot to celebrate. Uh, I also see Malia Cohen in the crowd, and I want to say thank you to her. She's been a strong advocate for our public housing residents in uh, District 10, along, of course, with London Breed, whose story continues to be uh, so inspiring to me because every day, she's not necessarily in my ear, but she's in my ear. <laughs> uh, and we remind each other of our experiences in growing up in public housing and making promises to each other about how we're gonna help others get out of poverty. It's not just getting out of public housing. It's about getting out of poverty. And I know the secretary here today is gonna to have a lot of things to say, and I'm, I'm truly inspired by uh, the kind of support that we have gotten. You know, as determined as Olson says that I am about this topic, which I am, uh, I am lucky to have a lot of people surrounding me that have a similar interests, a certain passion to help people get out of poverty. And part of that is really to have an answer to dilapidated housing that uh, people call the housing authority's fault. You know, Barbara Smith is here and I've never told her it's her fault. I've always said that we isolated you and your agency for so many years. We considered the residents not to be residents of San Francisco, but they, were, they belonged to the housing authority. Well, never again is that reference going to happen, that we are proud to say that the residents of our public housing are residents of San Francisco. What does that mean? Yes, that means a heck of a lot. And those conversations have now produced action. Uh, they produced a lot of people that stepped up. You know, our regional office led by Ophelia Basquel is here, and she was a stalwart supporter of our vision uh, for that to happen. Uh, our housing authority staff uh, got out of the role of being isolated and into really strong conversations with our city administrator, obviously with Olson's team, with our entire housing folks. And then I've been bringing in some new elements, the nonprofit housing developer sector that has expertise in running uh, uh, housing developments for low-income families and seniors, bringing their expertise in to add value to the entire city family. And as Olson said earlier, you know, RAD, a rental assistance demonstration, you know, it really is a tool. A tool of uh, different government programs brought together. But what we had to do was put that to in a re-envisioning process. And that was a little more challenging to happen. And then we had to piece together a plan that involved the residents. Because most importantly, if the residents don't believe what you're doing, you can say all you want that I'm gonna better your life. If they don't believe it, there is no way you can improve their lives. Uh, and so it had to be a partnership utilizing these tools. The other part of this uh, getting here was to have a housing authority commission uh, made up of uh, people that also shared uh, that with the staff and with the conversations with the residents. We had to have a strong, strong relationship and continue to do with our labor representatives uh, who are dramatically important to this effort. We need everybody to be at the table because guess what we asked of each other? It wasn't just the commitment to the residents. We also had to overcome our own bureaucracies. We have very thick walls in our bureaucracy. And part of my job was to break that down to allow for a significant level of flexibility. Flexibility 
that uh, I talked to when Sean Donovan was secretary, when the deputy uh, uh, secretary was with us on a phone call after phone call after phone call, and we were pleading for more flexibility from HUD as they were pleading with us, you got to demonstrate uh, that there'll be outcomes that we can be proud to share with it because we can't just give you something. You got to demonstrate that's really going to lead to something that we'd be proud of because guess what? The federal government these days can't tolerate failure. There's no room for failure. We have to really take a lot of risk in this RAD demonstration program. I know the pressures on Secretary Castro, uh, and he knows the pressures on me because he's been there as well. And, you know, to turn 4,500 units for 5,400 families, people with disabilities, seniors, into a collaboration with labor, nonprofits, city administrators, housing authority staff, uh, all had to be demonstrated time and time again. We began with smaller projects. We began with the embracement of Hunter's View. And now you see what's happening, brick by brick, family by family, moving in to those units, not in isolated fashion, with a level of support of services that they can really trust to help them get more successful. You're going to see that demonstrated in Alice Griffith. And we had a great infusion of federal dollars there. And another person that I want to thank over and over again is going to be our Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi. She's been there time and time again, allowing us to demonstrate uh, what we have felt has been behind the entire vision. And that is not so much investment in the brick and mortar. That's going to be very important. But we began with investment in people first, investment and letting the residents know we care about them. They are to be treated as full-fledged residents of San Francisco. Uh, this is the conversation that London Breed and I had time and time again. Uh, she's led the effort to uh, make sure that our budget is appropriately supportive of our public housing residents, not a separate budget that housing authority can survive or die on their own. We have to start blending that because guess what? The actual people that live there are residents of San Francisco. So if they fail, we as a city fail. Easy concept, hard to get through the bureaucracy. So we needed everybody. We needed tenant advocates. We needed people that believe in us. We needed to demonstrate that quickly. We needed to have all the agencies, including our police officers, our firefighters, our building inspectors, our human resource uh, expertise that has been involved tremendously in the way we staff up these things. We need everybody to believe that this is the right direction. That's the ingredients of success to this point. And so I am so happy to announce this because RAD ultimately is just a tool. And if you don't use it with live human beings that believe of what you're using that tool for, you'll never get the goal of this tool done. The housing, uh, the human uh, uh, people behind HUD are to be congratulated uh, because uh, we do work in thick bureaucracies. And it was uh, and had to be a big selling point for us to convince HUD that we had the right direction and that we were willing in San Francisco to take a great part of the risk ourselves. If they don't see a city mayor willing to take the risk, why would they also join in that risk? And so it really is about transforming the bureaucracies that we're in into a really collaborative, strong spirit. And so I named all these people because I want to give them total credit for this collaborative, uh, a strong effort that we're demonstrating today. We have the opportunity now to use this RAD program with all of the flexibilities that we've asked for and that also we're taking on more risk as a city because it's worth it to invest in our residents. You know, some of them, all they wanted was better elevators, you know, and now they're getting that, you know, and some of them, all they wanted was heat and hot running water in the winter and no cockroaches yes. and not things that failed and fire alarms that would actually work in fire. Those are simple things. How come we're not doing that? Many residents would ask and I would ask. And there will be reason after reason after reason. Well, I think this transformation will be sustained by uh, a very knowledgeable resident base, 
and encouraged and inspired staff working together with them. The nonprofit sector has tremendous expertise and they're already in my office saying, hey, it's not about the brick and mortar. We gotta provide a level of services once we take over these, these projects. We gotta have services that the city has never done before. Because if you're gonna ask people to challenge themselves to get out of poverty, you gotta invest in them as well. We've done that time and time again in non-public uh, housing resident places and we've been very successful. No reason to treat otherwise. Uh, this re-envisioning is going to happen. I am so happy it's happening under our watch. I'm so glad it's happening under the leadership of uh, Supervisor London Breed and Supervisor Malia Cohn. There are two strong women who are not gonna let me be alone on this. Uh, and they have constituents that won't let them be alone on this. Uh, all in all to say that uh, my envisioning for the entire housing challenge, housing crisis in the city is one that I say I'm up to the challenge, we are up to the challenge. Uh, and the housing authority is just the beginning. I've got 30,000 units of housing to build. I've got more promises to fulfill in every single neighborhood. We're gonna get to that uh, with the housing bond this November. We're gonna get to it with a complimentary uh, infusion of private dollars that we've seen time and time again help us uh, with city challenges. Uh, but ultimately, too, is that all of us who now work in government uh, can proudly say that uh, we work at HUD, we work at the Housing Authority, we work in the Housing Office, we work in a nonprofit, and we're proud to be San Franciscans because we're demonstrating how we can help each other be successful. Uh, I met uh, Secretary Castro uh, long ago as uh, mayors. And I'll tell you this, I am so thankful to President Obama who keeps picking mayors to be cabinet secretaries. <laughs> you know, and you know, whenever you meet a former mayor in a federal position, you only have to talk half as much. <laughs> because they get it. And I know that uh, Secretary Castro was picked by President Obama because not only he gets it, he gets things done. And when he saw the challenges that uh, we were all under months and months of discussions with uh, the staff at HUD. He rolled up his sleeves, he went to work like any mayor would, and God bless him, you know, the experience from San Antonio that he, that he allowed himself to remember recalled all the things that I'm presently challenged with, and it was really a smooth going forward. Uh, he had to challenge his staff at HUD, by the way, because everybody works in bureaucracies, but if you have the leaders that have the kind of experience that he has running an agency like HUD for the entire country, uh, you gotta have faith. The federal government's gonna have some good answers because you're placing people who have been there. And so that's my way of uh, uh, introducing uh, someone who's been exciting to me as a national leader, someone who's gonna take what we do in San Francisco and brag about it to the rest of the country just like I'm gonna do with 400 mayors in June. <laughs> Uh, but to also say that we have to do it as a partnership, that he had to also challenge his own staff to be flexible in the way they do these vouchers, in the way they do on-site stuff, in the way that, uh, but they also said, but you, you have to deal with your local labor leaders. You gotta get them to be flexible as well. That's been a huge challenge for us. And again, I wanna thank the labor leaders of the local community because we have to have that flexibility in there in order to get all this thing done right. Uh, the RAD program, I want to repeat, is only a tool. You've got to have all the people involved in really strong conversations to have this happen. And so uh, RAD is here. Our, our projects are on the cusp of being changed. We're in the building that 12 months from now will have brand new operating elevators. We'll have their units uh, done in a way in which people with disabilities can get in and out quickly, can get in their showers with all the uh, safety bars, can have good views in the window, but ultimately can have a management that they can speak to that's responsive, that follows up with them on challenges in their life, not just in the building, what's happening around here in the community. We are approaching this from a community perspective as HUD would want us to do. They're about urban development. They're about signaling examples across the country like San Francisco, how are we developing communities for our residents, not just nice looking buildings. And so uh, 
Uh, I want to say that with all enthusiasm uh, to welcome and to thank Secretary Julian Castro, former mayor of San Antonio, Texas, but now uh, a very, very good secretary for HUD. Thank you very much. Secretary Castro. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Lee. I think the mayor said it all. Uh, so, and said it very well, too. Uh, let me just begin, uh, Mayor, by thanking you uh, for your excellent leadership that has brought us to the point that we're at today. You know, I think that I've, in the six months that I've been on the job, uh, I've spoken to, to you and Mayor de Blasio the most. Uh, so I, ha I will tell San Franciscans that y'all have quite a champion for you in the mayor's office with Mayor Lee. Uh, and thank you to, uh, uh, to you, Madam Supervisor, uh, to our tenant advocates. Uh, I also want to give a big thanks to Ophelia Bascal, our uh, regional coordinator. <laughs> And all of our HUD staff and want to recognize uh, Jameen Bryan, uh, who is our Acting Assistant Secretary for Public and Indian Housing, and Jennifer Jones as well from, from uh, PIH. Uh, thank you all for the great work that has led to this moment. Uh, this is an important moment because really this is about two things. Uh, first of all, it's about getting things done, as the mayor said. Uh, and we recognize that getting things done uh, in the context of public housing has been harder and harder over the years uh, because we've developed uh, about a $26 billion backlog in terms of capital repairs uh, for our public housing stock. That means that we need to get more and more resourceful and look for ways that we can make our dollars stretch. Uh, we've done that through uh, RAD, the Rental Assistance Demonstration Project. In fact, since 2012, uh, investments through RAD that allow traditional public housing communities to leverage long-term Section 8 financing have accounted for about $500 million worth of investment. Uh, the second part of why we're here today goes to uh, the impact that it's making on people's lives. Uh, we're here to enhance the quality of life for public housing residents in San Francisco and through RAD really across the United States. Uh, this is going to mean that uh, families, that seniors, that folks who are disabled have a better place to live in this city, that they have every day a more enjoyable experience and they're able to live out their lives better. Um, what we want fundamentally is for it to be a positive experience that folks live in public housing communities. Uh, and for young people so that uh, they can have their big dreams and be able to reach their goals and their aspirations for our seniors so that the golden years can truly be golden in a comfortable place to live for folks who are disabled so they can live a great quality of life and be accommodated as they should and that's something that doesn't just happen by accident it's something that happens because of the hard work of folks like Mayor Lee and his staff and our supervisor and our tenant advocates and folks on the job at HUD each and every day. Uh, the investment here in and of itself is going to be about $11 million. And as you said, over the, over the course of the next couple of years, 4,500 units are going to be improved because of this. San Francisco is leading the way when it comes to making important investments in the people who live in public housing to say that everyone counts in this city, right. this beautiful city. So uh, uh, we're excited about this uh, investment. We're excited about the impact on people's lives. Uh, we're excited for our, our rental assistance demonstration, RAD project. In fact, in fiscal year 2015, we just got the, the cap lifted on how many of these we can do from 60,000 to 185 and in 2016 the president asking is asking that we lift the cap entirely so that city by city community by community we can fundamentally transform public housing and make a great quality of life for Americans across this nation we're going to do it thank you At the January uh, board, uh, board of Supervisors meeting, President Breed was elected president of the Board of Supervisors by her colleagues. President Breed is a San Francisco native, grew up in public housing in the Western Edition not far from here. She has always been a strong advocate for affordable housing. I first met 
the, the supervisor um, when she was a commissioner at the redevelopment agency, and she advocated for a strong affordable housing program and all of the redevelopment plans at the redevelopment agency. In her current position, she remains committed to affordable housing, especially to improving the conditions for public housing residents throughout the city. I'd like to introduce President London Breed. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so excited. Um, I'm actually emotional about this, especially because I grew up in public housing, lived there for over 20 years, and this is pretty amazing. This is going to change everything for the residents who live in those developments. I want to thank the Secretary Castro for coming here today and making this a priority. This is just, it means so much not just to the mayor and myself, but I know that many of the residents and the folks around San Francisco who will find out about this program and what we're gonna do and the investment this, the city is gonna make, when, once they find out what the plan is and start to see the results, it is going to transform so many lives in San Francisco. And Supervisor Cohen and I, who, who represent districts that have large populations of public housing, we are looking forward to the day when the complaints go down considerably. <laughs> but on a serious note, growing up in public housing, I did feel isolated. The folks I grew up with, the challenges we, we, we faced, the crime, the violence, the hopelessness, the despair, uh, using when, when, our, when our bathrooms and our toilets didn't work, uh, we were fortunate to have good neighbors who at some times we would need to use their bathrooms for weeks at a time because we couldn't get our bathrooms fixed. Um, the roaches, the elevators that never worked, and the challenges of carrying groceries up 10 flights of stairs, and I mean, the conditions that existed then still sadly exist now. And that shouldn't be the case. When I first became supervisor, I said to the mayor, well, he asked me, what are my three priorities? And I said, public housing. He said, okay, what's your, what's your second priority? Public housing. Okay, okay, I get it. What's your third priority? Public housing. I couldn't be on this San Francisco Board of Supervisors in such an incredible position without remembering not only where I came from, but the fact that so many people still struggle in public housing today. Not just from the neglect of taking care of their units, but the neglect of providing the kinds of services that exist all over the city. Over $8 billion a year that we spend as a city how are we taking care of those residents? How are they getting the services they need in order for them to prosper in their neighborhoods? We as a city have got to do better and today I can really, with a lot of uh, hope in my heart, say that we are doing better. Investing over $50 million of city funding, this is unprecedented. Never before has a city made such a significant contribution because public housing has always been treated as if it's public housing and the housing authority. We are past those days and we are bringing the family back together again. The public housing family where all residents are part of this city and all residents will benefit in this city through the wealth and the things that exist because we are a city that cares about taking care of our residents. We are a city that cares about taking care of one another. And I gotta thank the mayor. I gotta thank him because he has kept his word. He has kept his word and has worked tirelessly to make sure that he keeps public housing on his radar, starting with the 1.7 million that we had given to rehabilitate units to allow ho formerly homeless families to move in and over 70 families that were living on our streets are now in those units. The elevator money that will fix all of the elevators in public housing. So this mayor is not just talking the talk, he's walking the walk. And that means so much because the way we get it done is if we work together. The way we get it done is we make sure that we continue to keep it at the forefront of everything we do in this city. No more neglect. We are finally doing 
what we need to do to take care of the residents of our public housing developments. And, and I am just, as I said, I am emotional today as someone who remembers what it feels like. And I'm just taking it all in. I'm enjoying the moment. And I can't wait to the day where this place in particular is rehabilitated. When we do work at West Side Courts and Holly Courts and West Point and all of these developments that have been dilapidated for many, 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 many years. And, and I want to emphasize the importance of not expecting services to uh, find their way or, or people to find their way to where services are because it is difficult to figure out how many services are available all over the city. We are going to be using these services and bringing them directly to the community rooms of the public housing development. We are going to be bringing hope to the public housing, de uh, public housing residents. And I look forward to the day when we change the way the city does business with our residents and it no longer will be operating in isolation. This is a great day. Thank you to Olson Lee and his team at the Mayor's Office of Housing. Thank you to HUD for just basically allowing the red tape and the bureaucracy not to get in the way of progress. Thank you to Barbara Smith and her team at Housing Authority for just doing the best they can with the limited resources they have. This is a great day in San Francisco and I'm looking forward to the changes to come. Thank you. So, so, so London, uh, excuse me, Supervisor Braid, <laughs> President Braid, uh, struck uh, you know, a question. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this work? We're doing this for the residents. We want the residents to have a better life through these improvements that we are making here, both on the physical side and on the social service side. But we were, we're sort of Johnny come late leads to the game. As, as London said, the Housing Authority has been isolated for a long time. But there's been an org two organizations that have been steadfast in trying to represent the, the needs and the wants of the residents for many, many years. And I'm hoping that um, we're actually delivering on some of those things through this um, rental assistance demonstration process. Those two organizations are the Citywide Council of Senior and Disabled uh, Residents and the Public Housing Tenants Association. And behind me are both Beverly Saba and uh, Joyce Armstrong. <laughs> and we thank them. We thank them tremendously for their support in getting us to this point. Because they've heard a lot of promises over the years. And we were just in a set of promises, just like anybody else. Um, but I think that at this point, we're going to be delivering on those promises. But, but Beverly and Joyce, I'm going to ask more of your patience because I'm going to ask for your, um, I'm going to ask for your patience because you know rehab's not that nice at times. But and so I'm going to ask for your patience in advance because we're going to get through the rehab. It's going to be a little messy, but at the end of the end of the day we're all going to be better off. So I'd like to ask Beverly to say a few words. My name is Beverly Saba. I'm president of Citywide Council Senior Disabled. We are the organization that advocates, advocates for our senior disabled in our senior disabled buildings and public housing. We advocate for them in every aspect of their living. I would like to bring Joyce up here as well because they do a tremendous job advocating for the family developments. Joyce, you want to introduce yourself? Thank you, Beverly. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, uh, Secretary Castro. We want to thank the supervisors um, for working on this, London and uh, Malia. We want to thank our Housing Authority Commissioners because they are really working very hard to make lives, the lives better in public housing. And we definitely want to work, uh, thank Barbara Smith, who we've worked with for many years. She's the redevelopment queen, the HUD queen, we call her. We have many Hope Six sites. In fact, we have six one of which I live in and represent. And we want to let you know we are very excited and we welcome this program. But Secretary, we want to ask you, we have something to give you. Uh, former Commissioner Gans will give to you. We are fighting to keep our jurisdiction-wide uh, councils uh, in place. 
We are very important to advocate for the people who can't be here all the time. Yes. We're conducting uh, leadership trainings of which we just finished this weekend that celebrated Black History and the Lunar New Year. We're very diverse. We're reaching out to all the people in public housing. So just remember, I'm here to advocate to keep our jurisdiction wide. Um, we have some some suggestions for you all so you can, you can share with President Obama. But please take that seriously. Anything that anyone needs from us, just ask us. PHTA and CCSD will be there. Thank you. The strength of the jurisdiction-wide organizations is that they are elected by the tenants in the buildings or developments to represent so we are internal to it. We ourselves are tenants. We live in these buildings. We live in these developments. At threat, with the conversion to RAD, RAD does not have a provision for the continued existence of these jurisdiction-wide councils. And this gives us a lot of worry. Who is there to advocate for them? Who is there to unify them together? so that their voice is heard. Whatever the issue is, regardless of who is managing them, who owns them, the tenants weren't sold, all right? So, and they need their advocacy. And that's what we're here for. So Mayor Ed Lee and Secretary Castro, we need you to fix this, that's right. okay? <laughs> we need to save our jurisdiction wide. Our job is to represent the tenants in, uh, in the housing, in every aspect of their lives. And to take that away from them is to leave them isolated and weak. Right. So kindly take us seriously. We do need the continuation of these organizations. Thank you. So we're going to c conclude the program and have uh, little questions and uh, a little opportunity for uh, questions and answers. Uh, but before we go to that, um, I'd like to do, um, thank this, you know, an incredible number of people. And I won't thank them in all individually, so they'll be very short. And I apologize in advance for not thanking them because there's a long list. But um, in terms of uh, Mr. Secretary, your, your staff, um, we do, do want to also acknowledge the Assistant Secretary Jabri Biniam, Biniam Jabri um, for his work also. And I'm, it's unfortunate he couldn't um, um, join you. And the former Assistant Secretaries Enriquez and uh, our own Carol Galante. Um, and we would also like to thank your line staff um, who are working and engaging with our staff on a day to day basis that will pull this transaction together and, and make it a success for all of us. Will Levy, uh, Greg Byrne, Jesse Wu, and Kathy Soroka. Um, in terms of uh, the city staff, um, there, it's the whole city that works on this. Um, <laughs> and everybody from the mayor's office, the city administrator's office, again, Naomi Kelly was cri critical in the re-envisioning um, uh, task force. And then the departments have all um, um, sort of lined up behind the mayor's uh, directive to assist um, um, the housing authority. I know that Tom Huey from DBI is here, planning staff is here, DPW, uh, Department of Human Resources, HSA. We are, going, we are all working t towards a common goal. And this is, again, the whole notion that the housing authority and its residents are no longer an island in San Francisco. Um, I want to thank the, the uh, enterprise list, uh, Dignity Health, and the other people we're working with the, um, the developers in the cohorts. I want to thank our, our housing developers. We are uniquely blessed in San Francisco to have a wonderful affordable housing development ecosystem. They have stepped up to the plate to do something that is difficult, um, and it's going to continue to be difficult, but I know that they'll do it well. And last but not least, I want to, last but not least, I want to thank my staff um, who have been working on this as long as I've been working on it, and two people in particular, Lydia Ely and Aaron Carson, who have been leading the charge for two years on this. So again, thank, thank you all. It's, it's, it's a, we will all do this together, and hopefully we will all see each other in, in about 12 months for the uh, um, groundbreaking for the first one, or actually the completion of that, or, or the completion of the last. This is, uh, again, a great endeavor. At this time, we'll, uh, we'll open the floor for uh, some, some questions. One quick question. Uh, Mark Matthews, Bendy, CJ Area. Could you help me out with an 
numbers. I, I heard the secretary mention 11 million in federal funds and the mayor 50 million in local money. How does that free up 500 million in needed repairs? For, um, so the 11 million is the the rehab scope for this particular building. Um, the the five so the the 35 buildings that are being rehabilitated through the rental assistance program will get 500 million dollars in rehab. Um, so that's the the sort of the extent that that's the the sort of the the number for the um, larger portfolio. The 11 million dollars is uh, um, this pr particular building. So what is the source of that 500 million dollars? The source of that 5 million dollars is a variety of things, from uh, uh, private uh, first mortgages to low-income housing tax credit equity. Um, so, uh, some of that will also be the the contribution that the uh, from the check that the mayor signs for 50 million dollars. Well, all this goes together. Um, uh, 52 million, okay, <laughs> and growing. Um, but the, all the, all those sources combined will will go towards funding those uh, that those those repairs. And that's just the repairs. It's not the soft cost, quote unquote, that uh, you know related to the architects and the consultants and things like that. But just the repairs alone. Private first mortgages. Private. Well, the one of the unique things about uh, yes, public housing can be financed with pu with private first mortgages because of the rental assistance program because they are now vouchers instead of direct subsidies to the housing authority. This is one of the unique things about the rental assistance demonstration program and changing the form of the subsidy. So private lenders have been very used to you know, what, what they call project-based Section 8 uh, developments in the past, and the, the secretary and, and the department have modeled that on behalf of um, how, uh, public housing sites. So they're creating a form of vouchers that, that, that the lenders and the investors are very familiar with. So, so yes, there will be private first mortgages on, this, on these buildings, and they will be supported by RAD, RAD vouchers. How much of uh, the city's uh, public housing is going to be run by uh, private nonprofits? Well, these um, these um, 3,500 uh, units will all be ultimately run by private parties. Some of them are nonprofits, some of them are for profits. One of the unique things about how the city of San Francisco has structured um, these um, this transaction is that we will hold uh, the housing authority holds the land. It's not going to be sold off, and the, the housing authority remains involved in, in managing the, the asset uh, for the foreseeable future. So there, all San Francisco's public housing will be managed by outside agencies? That's correct. So what's the housing authority's role going to be, and, do you, and, and what is HUD's role going to be? Well, the housing authority's role um, is clearly going to be will evolve um, from day-to-day -day, uh, ownership and management to asset management, and they will have an incredible role in terms of managing the voucher program going forward. Um, in terms of HUD's role, HUD's role will still remain the same. They are the people who are responsible for providing these resources. They have the ongoing obligation of, of ensuring that we use those resources appropriately, and they still have the continuing obligation to serve um, and goal to serve low-income people just like the city of San Francisco. What's the timeline? Timeline. We hope to start construction on the first project in, in October of this year. On the website of the San Francisco Housing Authority is a listing of all the developers um, who are, and the particular developments that they are uh, currently engaged in. We are, um, we, as we said earlier, we're at the start of this process. We still have to go through a few things in terms of getting our lender investor. We still have the subsequent approval from the HUD staff because they, um, this is a momentous occasion. They still have to sign off as the packages come together, but the, the, the developers who are, have been selected by the Housing Authority for their exclusive negotiations are all listed on the Housing Authority website.